I stand this day and I decree upon every one under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus, may you experience accelerated change. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to be picking it from different angle or the other. As the Lord will permit me to speak. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 10. First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. It says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. I read again. But the God of all grace, if I may ask you how many grace, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and said to you. Now pay attention to this word. The Bible shows us something very distinct through the apostle Peter. Peter said, Our light affliction is working in us an eternal weight of glory. Affliction is not good. But the mighty man of God did not say their light affliction. He said, our light affliction. He said, it's working in yours and heat and a weight of glory. That same man called the apostle told Timothy, he said, endure hardship. <laughs> he says, endure affliction. Because affliction or hardship has an assignment. But before we talked about that, affliction can be provoked by God himself. Affliction can also be provoked by the devil. Affliction can be provoked by God himself. <laughs> Affliction can also be provoked by the devil. Don't pray away all affliction. You don't pray away all affliction. There are some things you are going to go through in life, even though you pray it, it will still be there. I'll give you an example. Is there a way a pregnant woman can pray that 
she wants to give birth to a son without carrying the baby for nine months. That's not possible. So, most of the time, what people are actually attempting to pray away are things they must go through in life for destiny to be bettered in their lives. When you read the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 10 it says and the sons of strangers shall build up thy wall and the kings their kings shall minister unto thee for in my rod I smote thee but in my favor I have had mercy on thee may the Lord have mercy on you today. <clears throat> in the Bible passage where we read, in the book of 1 Peter, you see something there. The Bible says, after you have suffered a while. Now, this was something written to believers, not written to unbelievers. He said, after you have suffered a while, now, it says God will now do something. Meaning that according to God's plan and design, suffering is not meant to belong. Suffering is not meant to take many years. Suffering is meant to take a short time. It says after you have suffered a while, Because what you are suffering from is what will provoke you to make a request from the Lord. If you don't suffer some things, you will not pray some things to the Lord. So God wanted you to pray some prayers. So if you don't go through some things, you wouldn't pray certain prayers. Remember Jesus, our Lord, while he was on the cross, he even questioned the Lord, questioned God. If he wasn't on the cross, he couldn't have questioned God. He says, hello, hello, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That kind of utterance came out because of what he was going through at that time. We are in a world today that people don't want to go through anything. And that's the reason when you check people who are great, they have stories to tell you that will encourage you, that will motivate you, that will inspire you, that you have a better future ahead. God wants you to be an example. God wants your life to be a challenge to those out there. But he has to take you through certain processes. But we are going to deal with something now because I want us to pray. Brethren, sufferings can be long. Sufferings can be long. But according to God's design, sufferings should not be long. Challenges can be long. According to God's design, challenges should not be long. Job went through things. I hope you know that all Job went through did not, was not up to a year. All Job went through was just for eight months. And after eight months, all the challenges of Job ended. After the eight months, the Bible says that God restored to Job double. So, God intended to do something in the life of Job. He took Job through a process. If Job was asked, are you willing to go through this process? Job would say, God, don't try it. He had everything, but all he had was taken away. He had everything, all he had lost in a short time. But is it not so amazing to you that this same Job, the Lord gave him double of all he lost? Who is that person? Under the sound of my voice today, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, your increase will be on the double. So, sufferings can take longer time. But sufferings should not take longer time. Sufferings should take a short time. What Job went through 
within eight months, Job conquered it. Job overcome it. I'm praying for you today. May the Lord remember you. Now, open your Bibles to the book of Psalms 90. Because we want to pray from there and we dive into the word. Psalms 90. I hope you know that if you have if you have knowledge, you have revelation. I hope you know that when God wants you to get understanding of it sometimes, it is through challenges you will get understanding. Understanding. <laughs> now, God intends to do something in the life. Now, this was the first psalm in the old Psalm 150. This is the first psalm. And this psalm was by Moses, the man of God. <clears throat> when you check the heading of this psalm, according to my own Bible, it says of God and humanity. So, the man started saying some things, but when we got to verse 13, Psalms 90 verse 13. It says, Return, O Lord, how long? Ah, thank you, Jesus. May the Lord return to you. Amen. You know, in those days when we just, when we started growing in the faith, we were taught all kind of things. One of which is that the spirit of God is inside of you. Is it true? And if the spirit of God is inside of you, can the spirit of God depart from you? Now, we are building understanding. Answer me. Can the spirit of God depart from you? Is in you. What's that thing that can make the spirit of God to depart? The day you say, I no longer believe in Jesus. Now, <laughs> We understand that the spirit of God is inside of you. And the spirit of God cannot depart from you. Then, why should we not say, return, O Lord, since I understood that the spirit of God is inside of me and the spirit of God cannot depart from me. If you tell me that, is that not Old Testament? If you tell me that, I may assume you do understand the finished work of Christ. Because the spirit of God is inside of me. The spirit of God is inside of you. But this man here, who was saying, return, O Lord. How long? You need to know the profile of this man. This man was a man that afflicted the old Egyptians with all kind of affliction. This was a man that he was performing miracles like game. <laughs> this was a man that the way he responds to the words of Pharaoh, when Pharaoh say, no, I will not let them go. The way he responds is by miracles. This was a man that Pharaoh will say, please, please, please help me beg your God. Help me beg your God. He will say, okay, God, no problem. No problem. You will let them go. He will go and talk to God and say, God, you had him. So, God, please, let's calm him down. Before he comes back, the man will say, no. This was a man who had God. It was a man who had one stick. They call it rod. He smote the ground and that become lies. All kind of miracles. According to theologians, the miracle performed each of them because there were, there were ten gods in Egypt. Theologians said each of the miracles performed by Moses was a miracle to defeat each of the gods of Egypt. Mighty man. Ah, Moses had God. Hearing God was not difficult. This was a man, God said, others I speak to them through visions and dreams, but not Moses, my servant. I speak to him 
mouth to mouth. Do you know the meaning of that? Some translations say face to face. It's a man that will stand and say, God, what are you saying? <laughs> ah. This was a man who told God one day and said, God, we will not go until you follow us. If you won't follow us, we are not going. <laughs> and God followed them. Oh my God. It was a man that they got to the wilderness. God, they need water. Or we need water. God said, strike the rock. What kind of faith is that? That you know that water can come out of the rock and feed, satisfy, quench the thoughts of over 3 million people. <laughs> Moses, the man of God. God is attending to someone today. This same man called Moses, with all the profile I just rendered, this man called Moses. One day he spoke to God and said, God, return, return, return. If God was somewhere, God will ask him, where did I go? He said, God, return. Once again, your God will return. We are going to get there. <laughs> because my God will return from this meeting. Thank you for helping me saying amen. My God will return from this meeting. If a great preacher hears it, he will say, this person doesn't understand that God is in him. Yes, God is in me. This man said, return, O oh Lord. What's the next thing? How long? How long? How long? Now, when he said return, O oh Lord, he was not saying God come back because God was not lost and God did not go anywhere. He was simply saying, God, you have said some words to us. Those words have not manifested, but we know the reason it has not manifested. The reason those words haven't manifested was because you have not returned. When you return, those words will come into fulfillment in our lives. So when we say God will return to you, we are simply saying what God has said to you will come to fulfillment. Now, open to, I want to explain the concept of return, oh Lord. Open to the book of Genesis. Chapter 18, verse 10. Genesis chapter 18, verse 10. It says, and he said, now this was the Lord speaking to Abraham. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tenth door, which was behind. <laughs> now, catch this because we are going to pray now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for someone here. All that God has said to you that you have forgotten, may you remember now. Amen. God told Abraham long ago and said, Abraham, you are going to have a son. And for long, for years, that son did not come. God had told him when he was 75, you are going to have the son. He was 80. The son did not come. The man did something. Had another son. God said, it's still not that. that's not the son I promise you. The one you got is by your efforts. But the one I want to produce is by my mercy. So, he said that that one you did, and you know that anything you work out by your efforts, you will always regret it in the end. So he said, that one you did, 
It's by your effort. I have a son for you. So, 75 years, no son. When God spoke to you, or whenever God speaks to you, it will be as though it's going to happen instantly. Yes or yes? So, God spoke to Abraham, 75, nothing happened. <laughs> spoke to him, 76, nothing happened. A year after, two years after, five years after, ten years after, fifteen years after. And people just say that Abraham had a son later. Isaac came. But before Isaac came, ask yourself what transpired. What transpired was that one day, three men appeared in a city. Genesis chapter 18, you see them. Three men appeared in the city. Two angels and the Lord. And Abraham brought them in and entertained them. Then we saw the effect of it. The Lord said, Abraham, according to the time of life, I am going to return. And Sarah is going to have a son. What is God telling him? By next year, that long promise, that thing I told you when you were 75, that was 24 years ago. He says it will be done. You know when you hear, I will return again, the mindset could be that God is coming back. I hope you know that that God did not come back to Abraham's house. If you read your scripture. I hope you know that God did not come back to Abraham's house. The way God came back was that Abraham had a baby. When the baby came, it therefore means that God had come. God spoke the first time and he went. And after many years, he came back. Who is that person under the sound of my voice? That God that told things long ago. Because you are in this meeting tonight. By the mercies of God, may the Lord return to you. So, in that book of Psalms 90, the man asks, Oh God, how long will you return? We want you to return. He's saying, we want you to bring to pass what you have promised us. Bring to pass what you have said to us. That's what we want. That's what we desire. Now catch this. That man later changed his words. He said, if I keep talking like this, nothing will happen. If I keep saying, oh God, how long? That's complaint. When will you return? When will this happen? That's complaint. God will just be where he was. But that man got the key. He got the key. What's the key? Verse 14. He changed his prayer point. He said, Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. <laughs> That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Satisfy us early. After you have suffered a while, if you satisfy us early, it will not be longer. Suffering will not be longer. Challenges will not be longer. Satisfy us early. This is a prayer you are going to pray. Someone could be here, could have said, well, I've prayed that prayer in the past. God has satisfied me. Ooh. If your eyes can see what God has for you, if your eyes can capture the visions, the plans of God for your life, you will know that that can only happen by mercy. Your effort cannot produce it. But when the mercy of God comes, something can change in your life. Why sit we here till we die? But your mercy can turn things around. God satisfy us early with your mercy. Can you open your mouth and pray that? And say, my father, my God, I call upon you today. Satisfy me early with your mercy. 
Satisfy me early with your mercy, Lord. Satisfy me early with your mercy, Lord. Jesus' name, we have prayed. As you have prayed, if you are not sensitive, you will not know what is happening here. Because I see a vision now. And in my vision, I saw a hand. I didn't see the person. I saw a hand stretch. And it's as though something was written in a small paper. And it was placed before someone. And what was said is redistant, redistant. It therefore means that there are things God wants to unveil to someone here. God has come to do that for that person. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I'm praying for you today. In the season of mercy, you will not miss out. Amen. Listen to me. Don't lose mercy. Can you preach to the post by us? I said, don't lose mercy. <laughs> don't lose mercy. Because I'm going to show you some things about mercy now. You cannot have favor except you get mercy. Hmm. Uh, you cannot have favor Except you have mercy. Another thing. Wisdom spoke in the book of Proverbs. Wisdom says, whoever finds me, finds favor. Meaning that if you find wisdom, you have favor. Someone is saying, God, what I want is wisdom. But what's the procedure? You have to get favor first with God before you get wisdom from God. But what will you get before you get favor? You must get mercy. So it is mercy first before favor before wisdom and before everything wisdom can bring to your life. Another thing. This one is funny now. <laughs> Whosoever finds a wife, complete it, everybody, finds a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. <laughs> so, you want a wife? I'm not saying a knife. You want a wife. I'm not saying a lady. You want a wife. I'm not saying a girlfriend. You want a wife. You must have favor first before you get a wife. And before you have that favor that will give you the wife, what must you have? Mercy. Mercy. He is powerful. Father, I pray for your people today. By your power, let them enjoy mercy on the increase. Amen. Now, <laughs> I, discovered, I discovered certain things about mercy recently that I want to share with you. What is 
mercy. What is mercy? Number one. Mercy is being delivered from the punishment that troubles the sufferings a person deserves. Mercy is being delivered from the punishment, from the trouble, and from the sufferings a person deserves. Now, that person deserves that suffering. That person deserves that punishment. That person deserves that trouble. But listen, by mercy, the person can be delivered. Hmm. Even though the person merit it, mercy will say, let it go. Even though the person deserves it, mercy will say, let it go. In the name of Jesus, may mercy consistently bail you out. Number two, what is mercy? Mercy is to assess the blessings, the opportunities, the favor, the help, the promotion, the enthronement, a person doesn't deserve. Hmm. Ah, thank you, Lord. Let us be real with ourselves. In this life that we are in, you cannot deserve everything. In this life, you cannot deserve everything. In fact, you can never have the qualification. You can never have the background. You can never have the character that will cause you to deserve everything. I mean every good thing of life. Yeah. But there is something that can cause you to deserve what you don't deserve. There is something that can cause you to have what you don't deserve. Your background says you don't deserve it. You are disqualified. You don't have the qualification. You don't have the connection. You don't have the knowledge. But mercy is saying, though you don't deserve it, you will have it. I pray for you today. By the mercies of the Lord from this day, what you don't deserve, begin to have. Amen. Number three, what is mercy? Mercy is the willingness of God to do something for you. Mercy is the willingness of God to do something for you. And you need to get this. Brethren, you can never force God to answer your prayer. Have you had people who say, you know, I've been praying for long and nothing is happening? It's mercy. It's mercy. Mercy causes God to be willing to do something for you. God is just willing. God is just willing. God is just willing to make it happen for you. Father, I pray for your people here today. Let them all enjoy your willingness. Ah. 
In the book of Amos, the Bible says, God himself, oh, God said, I can rain on one city and not rain on another city. Question. That other city that God did not rain on, what did they do? And this other city that God rained on, what did they do? In other words, God decide, I will do this. You can't force God. Though. That's why he says, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. You cannot force God. But when God shows you his willingness... Ah, what is difficult to others becomes something easy for you. What is hard becomes something easy for you. Let me give you an example. Now, this one I want to say is very funny. Very funny. Very funny. Just to show you mercy in a way. How many people understand what I said now? I want to show you mercy in a way. Praise the Lord. It's teaching. I'm still going somewhere. There was a time they did a comparison between two footballers. One is Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, I don't talk about sport. I'm not a football person. <laughs> and the other is Messi. And according to what I heard, someone analyzed it for me one day. The person said both of them are good players. He said, but here is it, Cristiano Ronaldo trained to become who he is. They said, but Messi is just natural to him, though he trained also. But Messi doesn't allot too much effort like Cristiano. Messi was not subjected to the kind of rigorous training that Cristiano Ronaldo go through. Now, I want to say something, but we are not talking about sports. <laughs> but that's the best illustration. So now, at the end of the day, this one Cristiano, oh my God, I'm on here. Sorry, Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Sorry. All right. But here's the point. <laughs> One is called Christian. Christian. You're a Christian. One is called Mercy. We don't know whether it's a Christian or not. And God says, I will have compassion of whom I will have compassion, whether a Christian or non Christian. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. That's the reason Christian most of the time we look at some unbeliever and say, why is your life going well like this? I will have mercy on whoever I like. You can't force me. I am God. Ah, God. If you want to make a decision of the next people, you are to show your mercy. Father, include every one of us. Amen. So now, this this young man, someone analyzed something one day, and they analyzed all kind of award or whatever, you know. Ah, my God. Hmm. When they analyzed mercy, yeah. so his name, in a way, is working. Because right from the time he started, I know that time oh, those were time we were we were current, but now it is well. I don't even know the football club he belonged to there. But I know those that under 17. My God, mercy. Mercy show up once and they never go back again. Showed up once. We are all his colleagues. He showed up once and they never go back again. He's just winning. We, even during injury. Or there was a season he had in view or whatever. He still is in the name of Jesus. May you enjoy mercy. Amen. So, I was meditating on mercy. 
So and God brought the image of mercy to me. So you see that man? It's my mercy he enjoys. Ah. There is a lady here. Thank you, Jesus. From this day, your life will be an expression of the mercy of God. There is something God showed me which everybody needs. Mercy will give you what you don't deserve, right? You don't deserve it. If you are still here, can you say amen? amen? I was meditating on this. And I came to a conclusion that some things we call problems are actually the mercy of God. If you are here, can you say loud amen? amen? Yes. I'm saying this by experience. That some things that happens to people in life, that thing that will cause you to cry, that thing that will cause you to weep, that thing that will cause you to look down on yourself and say, God, but you answer prayers. Listen, that thing is the mercy of God. Yes. Why? I'm speaking practically here. I realized there was a time in my life I prayed and prayed and prayed that God should help me do one thing. There is one something. I prayed and prayed and prayed. He didn't go. God didn't answer. To me, it was as though God did not answer. God was saying, it's my mercy. It's my mercy. It's my mercy. It's my mercy. I don't know. <laughs> you may be listening to me today. Could it be that God is saying, what is happening to you? It's my mercy. It's my mercy. It's my mercy. I'm trying to save you from old age. I know what I'm talking about. What should happen to you at old age? Hmm? God decided to make it happen early. Remember, satisfy us early. So, that thing should happen to you at old age. But God decided to bring your old age. He brought it forward. So that when you still have strength, you go through it. Not when you don't have strength again. <laughs> so sometimes some things people call challenges, problems they are proof of the mercy of God now there is something I'm afraid or shy to say but I have to say it because I'm teaching people don't like to hear this so if you are saying God have mercy on me could it be that you are inviting a challenge? <laughs> People don't like to hear it. But listen, you will never go through a challenge you cannot survive. Nah. You will only go through a challenge you can survive. So the game changer there is that what should happen to you at old age? God decided to change the game to say, let it happen to him heavy so that he can have rest all his days in the name of Jesus. <laughs> when mercy is shown to you and it comes in some hard way, may God grant you the grace to go through it. Amen. It's very real. 
His mercy is the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. In fact, in fact, while I was meditating, you know, God used the picture of someone to communicate to me while I was meditating. I'm going to say it, but I won't mention any person will know. <laughs> I remember one particular year, somebody called me on phone. We spoke. The person is here. The person is here. <laughs> the person called me on phone and talked about a particular challenge that happened. And I remember that day that the person wept. The person was crying on phone. <laughs> The person wept and said, why would this thing happen? But do you know, God enlightened me that what happened to that person that caused that person to shed tears was a proof of his mercy to him. Because if that thing did not happen to that person, what that person is into today, the person will not get into it. Very true. The person is here. The person knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. I remember the person cried. But it's that same situation God used to get the person into the things. Listen. Sometimes always verify facts. If you are sick, can you say Amen. Sometimes always verify facts. <laughs> Sometimes ask people, how did they get into what they are doing? <laughs> A challenge. Something. Something. So when mercy is shown, God showed the game. But are you ready to go through it? Thank you, Father. Let me tell you this. Whatever is causing you to weep silently or secretly is what you are still going to thank God for later. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Father. Another thing about mercy. Mercy bring you out of the situation that you put yourself. Mercy bring you out of the situation that you put yourself. Another thing. Mercy puts... Now, follow this. Oh. You know, it's easy to talk inspirationally, to just be talking. But this one, is organized inspiration. You know, this understanding. So, it's organized. If you meditate on it, you will get many things from it. Now, mercy puts the difference between you and others in the same situation. Mercy puts the difference between you and others in the same situation. Hmm. I hope you know that the day Joseph came out of the prison, I hope you know that there were many other people in that prison. And it was Joseph that was brought out. Mercy will give you the help you don't deserve in a way you can't explain. Another thing, it is mercy that brings remembrance. It is mercy that brings remembrance. God cannot remember you if he has not shown you mercy. Paul the apostle instructed us 
that in everything, you should what? <laughs> in everything, you should what? Give thanks. Because you don't know what is happening. You don't know what is going on in the realm of the spirit. You are there complaining and say, God, why me? God, why this? God, look at me. He said, in everything, give thanks. Because that thing you are complaining about could be the proof of God's mercy to you. So that you will not be complaining against the mercy of God when it is shown to you. Thank you, Father. In my little years that I've worked with the Lord, <laughs> let me give you a sign. I want to give you a sign. If you're still here, can you say amen? amen. Oh my God, see the way you said amen. If you're still here, say amen. amen. <laughs> you see, I want to give you spiritual intelligence. Just to add to what God has given you. So that you will not need the Holy Spirit. You will not need the Holy Spirit. You know, you need the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you, right? But I want to tell you something that you will not need the Holy Spirit. You can know. You just know. And when you know, ah, you will be, you will be very smart. You will be very wise. Yes. Even for yourself, you will know. What's that thing? We are all on earth. We are not in the spirit realm. <laughs> you cannot know the next set of people God will show mercy to. Can you know? You can know the next set of people that God will show mercy to. You can know because you are not in the spirit realm. But listen, you can know from today. And you will start knowing from today. Can you say amen? amen. See the way you are saying amen. amen. I said say amen. amen. I want to show you how you will know. And pastors should master this. So pastors, pastors, you should master it. Too. We have planting season. And it will grow. What's the next thing? Harvest season. So when the season change, what happened? Harvest. Good. But you have to plant first before pastors master this. So ministers of God master this. So counselors master this. So you see, <laughs> I want to show you how you know the next people God will show mercy to. When someone comes to you and say, you know. I don't just know what is happening these days. Everything is just not going the way I expect and all of that. You know, I'm just trying to figure it out. Well, I just believe it to be all right. You know, those challenges, challenges are there. I just believe it to be all right. Yeah, the person is going through a challenge, but the person is still speaking grammar. Are you with me now? So that one, you will need the spirit realm or you need the Holy Spirit to know and say, ah, God, what's going on about this person? Or you tell the person and say, well, go on, do this, go on, do this. Because the person is still speaking grammar. This person is still speaking grammar. It does not enter. <laughs> ah, oh my God. But when you see people that it has entered, they don't speak grammar. All their grammar will just disappear. Yeah, you know, I don't just know. Everything is not just going well. When you see people that their emotion is turned down, people that are down emotionally because of what they are going through, Huh? Be wise. That's the that's part of the next person that God will show mercy to. Because when that person comes out of that situation, he will not be speaking grammar. He won't say, you know, I was going through something some times ago, and 
I just apply this, I just apply this, I just apply this, I just do this. God wants to take glory. Such people, they will say, how did you get out of it? They may see everybody will still tell you it is God. So, when you see people that are down emotionally, those are people God wants to look down on. Yes. I know what I'm saying. So, that one, I don't need all the spirits to tell me. The moment I see that the emotion of a person is touched. Are you with me now? Let me now teach you another thing. Have you read the Bible says, blessed are them that show mercy. For they shall what? Obtain mercy. Are you with me now? If you don't want to pray to God to show you mercy, when the season of life change, you don't want to pray to God to show you mercy, but you want to get mercy. Huh? Show mercy to those who need mercy. That way, oh my God, <laughs> you just enter it easily. Let me teach you something today. Because it is his teaching. And God will do what he will do. Pay attention to what I want to teach now. This is not part of the common teaching in the world or in the church. This is not part of the common teaching. Pay attention to it. But you really help your life. There is a difference between beggars and needy. Pay attention to what I'm saying. No? There is a difference between what? Beggars and the needy. Now listen. You may not attend to beggars. But attend to the needy. The Bible says, with the measure with which you judge, you shall be judged. Seasons will always change. So, when you see the needy, show mercy to the needy. Why? Seasons will change. And when seasons change, it will be your turn. And when it is your turn, you also will, will need something. <laughs> it will not be what the other person needs. do. It may be some kind of favor. In fact, it may be health. You will need something. So, what will cause you also not to lack mercy when your own tongue comes around at the seed of mercy you have sown? You will harvest it when the time change. Hmm. And this I'm sharing is not a popular message. But it's very powerful. Show mercy to the needy. I'm not saying to beggars. So. Show mercy. To what? To the needy. It's very important. Never, the Bible says, he that gives to the poor, the needy, has lent to God. All these principles are principles that are missing in the church of God today. And when season and cycles come, you see that that mercy factor is missing in the lives of people. Thank you, Father. 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 
I want to cancel everyone here. So messy to the needy. You know, this is understanding, right? What am I transforming? Understanding. So messy. To the what? To the needy. It's very important. You do that. Let me go to this angle. There are some children today. Huh? God has made certain covenants with their parents. But their parents did not even know. There are some parents today. God has made covenants with them. But they did not know. Because they did not hear God when God said it. When you check those parents, you discover that the reason God decided to cut those covenants with them, check their life. They may not know the Bible like you do. They may not be able to quote scriptures like you do. But check their lives. You will see that they always show mercy to the what? To the needy. Yes, very true. Thank you, Father. Now catch this. Romans, we all know that scripture. Romans chapter 9, verse 16. Romans 9, 16. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God who shows mercy. You must be like God. Now say from today. Say it loud and clear. Say from today. I will be like God. God shows mercy. You must show mercy. There is something I wrote down about mercy that I love so much. When you obtain mercy from God, huh? God and men will love you beyond your mistakes. When you obtain mercy from God, God and men will love you beyond what? Beyond your mistakes. Very true. I was, I was with some people, was it on Monday? And I was sharing something with them. Now, don't miss this, oh. I share something with them. There are people that, when you analyze their life, you look at the way they behave. You look at the way they act. You look at the way they do things. <laughs> ah, if you are God, what will you do? You, if you are God, what will you do? You will, you will call such people home. You say, come home. Because if you continue to be on it, you will keep creating problems. Because character problem. Everything problem. 
Karabo Shandas Kapalanda Kaya. Now, those kind of people, their behavior and character should make nobody on earth to love them. And that will lead me to the next one that I want you to get because this is just understanding. But you continue to see that in spite of the person's mistake, God still loves that person. People still love that person. I mean, people understand what I'm talking about. You look. The, ah, what makes people to wait? What makes people to keep? Oh my God! The secret is mercy. The person is making a mistake. True. But when he obtained mercy, ah, ah. when you see the person misbehaving or you know doing nonsense and all of that, you say the way this person is going, ah, <laughs> it's just a short time. Give him a short time, something will happen. And you now realize that you give that short time instead of something to happen, something greater. Something what? Something greater. You will not be like, ah, okay, let's see what happened. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Why? He has obtained mercy. If you are here, can you say amen? amen? Now, that will bring you to the code too. So that you also, when, because there is no perfect man on earth, oh. Say this person to say this to the person. Say we are, we are perfect in Christ. We are not perfect in character. Say it loud and clear. Say it again. We are perfect in Christ. We are not perfect in character. So that when you explode in character, judgment should come on you. But what's the way? Just go and obtain mercy. When you obtain mercy, the world is waiting for your judgment. The next thing they will see is what? Somebody. He impregnated a woman. Brought the husband home. Killed the husband. Took the wife. If you are a judge, we have, we have we have baristas here. If you are a judge, what kind of judgment will you pro I mean, pronounce on that person? Death streets. <laughs> it's ever hanging. <laughs> Death streets. And they say God is a judge. Is God not a judge? Uh, should we not say men are wiser than God? Because this person, the sentence is what? Death. And at the end of the day, God said, well, no problem. You go. And even the successor of that man, the king that came, Solomon, came from that. Ah. Somebody say mercy. mercy. When you obtain mercy, uh, ah. Let me say this so that by the time God starts blessing everyone, this revelation I want to say can be in you. Help me preach to the person by your side. Money is not everything. I want to ask you a question. I hope you know that there are people who are rich that you don't like. <laughs> Is that true? You don't like them. Yeah, they are rich. You will say, eh? stay on your lane. I stay on my lane. I'm not a beggar, so stay on your lane. You know the reason? Huh? 
that person didn't have favor in your sight. And the reason the person didn't have favor in your sight is because a portion of mercy has left that person. Yes. That's it. So, when you understand, you know that riches has its limitation. They say, the rich has many friends. Yes or yes? Yes. People come around the rich. Let that rich lack mercy. And see whether people will still come. People will say, day your day. And I day my day. Stand where you are. And I what? I stand where I am. Don't lose mercy because you are rich. How will that happen? Don't let riches enter your head. Because when riches enter your head, if you are still here, can you say amen? amen? You need to understand it. Celebrities also need to understand this. Oh. I'm not preaching to celebrities. Celebrities say they love me, they love me. <clears throat> if mercy departs from the celebrity, what do they call former stars? What do they call them? They say they are new stars. No, the stars that are gone now, what do they call them? Huh? X. Celebrities. You know those celebrities? Movies, producers, actors, actresses. <clears throat> when mercy departs, I want to beg you, never let mercy live your life because it will cause people to love you beyond your mistake. And let me now say this to you about mercy again. You know, I said it today is for teaching. Ah, if you are here, can you say amen? Yeah. Ah, Jacaba Sata, Karabobo, Shakala Baye, Reba Karabasi, Karaba Katara Gabaya. Ah. <laughs> It's not good to lack mercy. When you lack mercy, people will hate you despite your perfection. The man, the woman is perfect. But mercy is not there. going to pray seriously today. You see someone who has everything but lacks mercy. Nothing will happen in the life of that person. You see a man, very handsome. The man is handsome. But no woman is willing to marry him. Lack of mercy. You see a woman, beautiful. But lack of mercy. Yes, be perfect. Yes, be beautiful. Yes, be handsome. Yes, be educated. 
Yes, be rich. But with everything, obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. Obtain mercy. <laughs> the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. I want your heart to reach out to go where you are. Because the Bible says, let us come to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. That God, your mercy. 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 Rebaha kambo hosha. Lira baha santa ye ye. Prema kaba huta. Ha! You don't have the qualification, but mercy. You don't have the connection, but mercy. 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 Mercy Lord. 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 Oh Shaka Bakata Kata Kata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Open your Bibles to the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22. Lamentation 3, 22. 22 to 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassions failed not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What is new every morning is mercy. Mercy should be every day thing in your life. <laughs> Mercy should be everyday thing in your life. It should be everyday reality. I say, God, today, mercy. <laughs> Tomorrow, what? Mercy. They are new every day. Every day. Mercy. Hi. Rahata kahasha kaba sala ba ya 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 So every day, every day must be for what? Mercy. With mercy, God will always have interest in your case. Mercy. Ha. Sir, we need mercy. Every day. Do you know that one of the subjects I did not understand early in my life is mercy? There is a particular church in this country. If I mention the church, we all know them. They have, they had 50 days fasting and prayer. <laughs> One time. In the year 2021. How many days? 
50 days. Then I wrote out prayer points to pray every day. Do you know what they did for the first 25 days? They thank God. They're just thanking God. We thank God. We thank God. We praise God. We praise God. <laughs> when they now move to the 26th day, to 50th day, another 25 days, do you know what they were praying for? They're just praying for mercy. Let us tell God to show us mercy. <laughs> mercy. 30th day, mercy. 40th day, mercy. They kept praying for mercy. So I'm wondering, what is the whole thing about this mercy thing? Is it that they don't know any other prayer points? But the man of God himself is a, is a grand, grand commander in prayer points. How come he says mercy? And I'm ending with this and we'll pray three prayer points. Half ten more minutes. One day, Jesus woke up. When Jesus woke up, he went out with his disciples. Jesus already had he already know I had everything he wants to do every day. Do you know that? If you are still here, can you say amen? amen. Jesus know every day. For example, the people were with him, wanted to feed them. He said, go and find them something to eat. The Bible says he himself knew what to do. He knew what to do. Every day, Jesus always knew. He always knew. He knew. He has the whole plan for every day. This must be, this. we are going here, we are going here, we want to attend to this. But one day, Jesus woke up. Jesus performed a miracle in the life of someone he never planned or included in his schedule. Bartholomew. That man cried and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hmm. Brethren, the focus of this meeting is mercy the game changer. I want to tell you something. I know you have your 2023 20, goals. You already have the things you want to achieve this year. But can I tell you, This I want to say the Lord said it. That the things you never plan in your 2023 goals, the things you never envisage that you are going to do. When you say happy, happy, happy new year, <laughs> you never had the plan as we are entering this new year. This will happen, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. Brethren, I want to tell you this, if you can believe it. Do you know that by the mercies of God, God will make it happen for you? Amen. You know why? That man was not part of heaven's schedule that day. But he cried for mercy. And what God didn't plan to do that day, mercy compelled God to do it. What God didn't plan to do for you this year. Mercy will compel God to do it for you. Amen. Let me tell you what I want to say. You see, this is May. We are entering June. We are entering June. Huh? You will be surprised. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the focus is God will return. That's where we started from. 
And we emphasize that the return of God is the fulfillment of his word. I tell you, you will see it. What you never knew that God will do this year. This year. Not one thing, no. Not two things. Bartimaeus woke up that day. He never knew he was going to see that day. He never knew Jesus was going to pass that place that day. In fact, about one hour to the time he received the sight, he never knew something was coming. He didn't prepare himself. Jesus was just passing by. And he had the news. And he said, ah, something must happen here. Among multitudes. Should I even tell you? The people that were following Jesus, nothing happened to them. He's the man that sat on one spot that something happened to. Listen, I'm not preaching or sermonizing. I'm speaking prophetic words. Believe it and you will see it. This year, this is May. We are entering June. This year, certain things you never thought God would do for you. Certain things you never thought you are going to have. Certain heights, certain levels, you never thought God would take you to. Ah! Kabobo skata! By the mercies of God, you will go there. Mercies! God asked me to tell you. He says, expect my return. Yeah. <laughs> my return is coming with fulfillment. Expect my return. Ha, 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 ha. Expect my return. It is coming with fulfillment. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Your story is going to be in the same year. In the same year. In the same year, in the same year, in the same year. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, Tahaya. If you are here and you have something you want to ask the Lord and say, God, to be added to the things you plan to do for me. Because when Bartimaeus obtained mercy, Jesus now asked him, what do you want me to do? After he obtained mercy, he said, what do you want me to do? He said, that I may receive my sight. That's what I want you to solve. Is there someone here that wants God to solve something? This is a place God will grant your request. Make that request known to God. And say, God, <laughs> this thing, I want you to do it. I want you to do it, Lord. I want you to do it, Lord. I want you to do it, Lord. I want you to do this thing. Thank you, Lord. one that you have shown mercy you have shown mercy you have shown mercy show mercy ah i am the one that you have shown mercy you have shown mercy you have shown mercy we are the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. We are the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. 
Oh, we are the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. Ah, 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 ah. We are the one that you, you have, have shown mercy. mercy. You, you have, have shown mercy. mercy. You have shown mercy. mercy. We are the one. We, we are, are the one that you, you have shown mercy. Say the game changer. Now, I want everyone in this auditorium to pay attention to this. I just spoke on mercy. The game changer. I want to speak on that. Now, for those online too, this is happening to you too. Let me tell you, this is it. There was a particular year, I was still young, much younger. So, football team were playing, AC Milan and Liverpool, UEFA Champions League. I was a fan of AC Milan. I was a fan of AC Milan. Shevchenko, my God. Pa, 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 first go. Pa, 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 second go. Pa, 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 third go. Ah, oh my God. Those who, you know, people, people used to bet. Those who, were, those who bet, they were already buying beer, <laughs> celebrating and saying, <laughs> ah, we have won this game. You know, we, we didn't bet, we didn't bow, you know, we belong to the winning team. We are already rejoicing. Ah, that guy, oh my God. Another goal should come. We are waiting for another goal. And if there is no other goal, final. The game changer showed up. First one. Pam! 31. We, say, <laughs> we have won this game. Second one. Pam! 32. Ah. Uh, Ah, those who are celebrating, all of us who became gentle. I can never forget. My body was shaking. You know this kind of fear that catch you? Ah, oh God, don't let us lose. Oh God, don't let us lose. Hey, 
at the end of the day, it ended up in penalty. Hey, my God. The, the what? Say it in all kind of language. They, they beat us. Hey. Those who were celebrating, those who were drinking beer. <laughs> oh my God. All of us became gentle. When the winner became the loser, and the loser became the winner, the game changer. Listen to me. Before you came to this meeting, there are people that have been defeated in the affairs of life. But because you are at this meeting, the game changer has showed up for you. Yeah. Now go and mark this word I'm saying now. From today. <laughs> Though you have always been defeated, but because mercy is shown to you, now you will start winning. Amen. Yeah. You have lost in the past, but right now, you are winning. Amen. Yeah. Let's say in your case, it was Somali 10-0. Now, it will be 10 1, 10 2, 10 3, 10 4, 10 5. It will be a record of success upon success. Record of achievement upon achievement. Somebody said the game changer. They saw you at the back before. They saw you as though you are going down. But when the game changed, you are coming out stronger. My God. It seems as though the business, the work, everything is not just going where you could not figure it out. You have done your best. You have done your best. I have a word of the Lord for you. In that same work, ah, the game is changing. Yeah. My God. Before, there were champions in that field. But right now, the game is about to change. You are about to overtake everyone in that field now. And I declare upon everyone, overtake now. The game changer. The game changer. The game changer. The game changer. In that, why am I here in the business? In that business, it's as though you, are, you have done everything and it's not working out. The game changer has come. That same business will work again. My God. You are going to, because the game has changed now, you are going to become the new person to be understudied. They will want to find out how is he doing it. My God. Somebody say game changer. In ministry, the game has changed. If you believe it, can you say loud amen? amen? The game has changed. Yeah, it is your turn. Ha 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 ha. Ah. You are going to shake cities. Can you say loud amen? amen? The game has changed. The game has changed. Thus says the Lord. In that industry, within two months, you are the game changer. Amen. Within two months. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thus says the Lord. In your family, you are the game changer. Amen. Everyone used to struggle for 20 years before they break through. In your case, not years any longer. It is from now. From now. Total and open breakthrough. If you believe that, can you say it louder? Amen. <laughs> Another thing. If you have been winning before. If you have been winning before. I watched a match one day, sir. No, I didn't watch it. I had this course. I had this course. They said 10-0. 10 what? 10 what? And they are not like those who scored 3-0 and some people equalized. 10 what? 10-0. The game changer. They scored two. They are like, oh, we are fine. Oh, my God. Another. Another. 
another. Those are people that keep winning. They keep winning. Can you hold a person? Hold a person by your side. Hold that person very well and repeat this word after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Can you say it like that? Say in the name of Jesus. From this day, we win only. Say in the name of Jesus. From this day, we win only. Can you pray another tongue on that? You win only. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Remember what I've taught? Ensure you pray for mercy every day. Secondly, ensure you show mercy to others. Show mercy to others. And you shall obtain mercy. According to that song, everyone here and those connecting online, we have obtained mercy. If you believe that, can you celebrate God tonight? Father, we thank you. Thank you for blessing us indeed. Thank you for your mercy. All the glory to you. Thank you for changing the game. Thank you that right now we are the one winning. All the glory to you. All the honor to you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Say this word, say I have the game changer. Because you have mercy. So I have the game changer. Because I have mercy. God bless you.